What's good, y'all? We got a special podcast leading into UFC 296. Uh, I got my homeboy, Francis, from Bad MMA Math. He's partnering up on this podcast. We're going to talk a variety of things, whether it be UFC 296 or uh, anything else uh, surrounding the UFC. But uh, before we get into it, welcome to Making the Walk podcast. Francis, how are you doing? What's going on with you? Really fantastic. You know what? Uh, as much as I am uh, crapping my jocks a little bit to be, uh, you know, at the prospect of jumping on the camera for the first time, uh, I'm really happy to be here. I've been I've been following your channel for a bit, uh, so I'm really excited to be getting this opportunity to to do this with you specifically. Yeah, man, I, I definitely appreciate you jumping on. Um, been doing the same, been following what you're doing, and and the the predictions and. The funny stuff that you say, it's it's hilarious. So anybody that's viewing and you haven't uh, subscribed to his channel, definitely do that. Um, but forgetting all the pleasantries, let's just jump into it. So so everybody knows, um, one, we're going to play a couple of, of games, so to speak, just to kind of get into this conversation. But um, feel free to drop stuff in the comments. Um, we love to have that conversation. Um, I know on his channel, he has tons of engagement, tons of conversations. Um, and I like to do that on mine as well. So make sure you drop shit in the comments. But, um, the first thing we're going to do is, well, we're going to, we were going to call it agree or disagree. I feel like that's, <laughs> that's the, the nice Englishman's way to say it. But here in, here yeah. in Texas, we, here in Texas, we're going to say, yeah, and nah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I can, I can yeah. get with that. I can get with that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, um, this was, this was your idea. So I think, uh, the first one that you listed, the one when we were coming up with it was is it Leon Edwards is correct to go for greatness at middleweight. Should he beat Colby at UFC 296? So I'll get you the first crack at that one. What, what do you think about that? Sounds good. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit torn on this one. Um, like on one side, I can see why Leon feels justified. Like, you know, in in his mind, he had to go through an absolute gauntlet to, to get a shot in the first place. Mm -hmm. When he finally did, you know, he beats arguably one of the greatest welterweights in the modern era. He'd essentially cleared out the division himself. And not only did he do it once, he did it twice, you know, to knock the guy out. And then to secondly, secondly for me to do it even more impressively by winning it with a shutout. And you know, legacies these days, they seem to be defined by people going up, grabbing a second belt. And if he can manage to do it against Colby even more convincingly than Kamari did, it might give him that springboard. But mm -hmm. ultimately for me, I'm going to have to say no. Um, you know, there's fights at well to wait he still needs to take. You know, he's got, you know, as much as I troll on Bilal all the time, <laughs> uh, he deserves a shot. Um, yeah. You know, Shavkat gets through Wonder Boy. Um, that's a potentially legacy defying matchup. Gary, you know, if he starches Luke, you got that whole storyline. I think the only way I could tolerate it is if Leon does decide to move up, he'd have to drop the world weight belt. Uh, that would be a fresh way to say, you know, I'm committed to the legacy. I'm willing to do that. It's the only way I could get behind it right now if he did that. I think there's fights at world to where he needs to take. I, I do agree that there's definitely fights at world to wait that he needs to take. He somebody needs to fight Bilal. Like, I mean, he's been like sitting on the sidelines for forever. They got you know a little bit of heat, even though both of them aren't necessarily the most exciting social media presences out there. That's like the nice way to say it. Um, yeah, but but. But Bilal has beaten the people that he needs to beat um, and looked impressive lately. So he does deserve this shot. I just I don't like the the narrative that we are. It's almost like we're devaluing the champ champ stuff. I feel like there needs to be something put in place like because the reason that this bothers me so much is because Anderson Silva never got the shot to be a champ champ. And so we're going to give all these other people, all these, you know, great accolades for being 
uh, champions in two divisions. Well, he could have done that shit in at light heavyweight <laughs> back in the day, but no, they wouldn't let him. So there needs to be yeah. something put in place. You need to defend your belt three times before you move up, say whether you're dropping it or not. Like, yeah, it needs to be something. But no, yeah, I I'm agree say, with that. Nah, I mean, yeah, even though I this one. This would be what his second time. I feel like if he were to defend his belt against Bilal and then Shafkat, if he wins, then okay, then we can have the conversation. But like if he's no, able agree. to do it, then okay, now we got Islam. He's going to do it too. You know what I'm saying? Which, like, we, it, which it, we may we may or may not talk about in a bit. Just a little bit of a precursor there. I know, I know for sure, uh, for sure. Okay, so we both said no on that one. Um, yeah. I'll say so the no. next one too early. Yeah, too early. Um, should John Jones have vacated the heavyweight title? Okay. You want to take the first shot at this one or you want me to go? I'm happy. Maybe we can go a little back and forth. You can go first if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go first on this one. Um, should he have vacated? No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. If I'm John Jones, like, forgetting everything that happened at light heavyweight, like, if I got the belt, unless somebody tells me that I have to drop it, I ain't dropping shit. <laughs> I'm not vacating <laughs> nothing. I'm. Not, it's mine, and, and you're going to have to come and take it. What really should happen is the UFC should make it mandatory that he fights Aspinall when he comes back. If they're, if they're going to do which, anything... Which is unlikely, isn't it? Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I did that whole video about that but I just don't I don't see the UFC doing that because then it's like well what are they going to do with Stipe because Stipe can't fight mm -hmm. well they just made the Curtis Blades uh, uh, Johnson uh, Almeida, Almeida fight he, was, yeah. he wasn't he was going to fight neither one of them dudes um, he's <sighs> not going to fight Pavlovich I mean who is he going to fight nobody so they're going to do that and hopefully both of them dudes leave so they can clear up the division but if yeah. I'm John Jones I'm going to hold on to it and you're just going to yeah. pry it from my hands. Yeah, I think like I was kind of looking down a similar lines. Like I feel, this one felt a little bit too clear for me. I just I think what I was looking at was if you look at the two precedents we've got recently. So you've got Jerry, who obviously got injured and then immediately vacated it. Or so mm -hmm. we heard. Like we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. True. But he seemed he seemed to vacate it very quickly after the injury. And then on the flip side, you've got Jamal Hill, who was quite vocal in saying that the UFC pretty much stripped him. Like, he wasn't given yeah. an option. And if you're looking at timelines, you know, I mean, Jones hasn't fought for a little bit, but it hasn't been too long. Now, if I'm Jones, of course I'm not doing it. You know, you've got the, the pay-per-view points obviously matter. And, you know, mm -hmm. with Aspinall kind of been seeing as, like, the rightful guy now in a way or the right next guy... Yeah. It does take a little bit of shine off that legacy fight when Jones and Stipe fight if there's no belt on the line. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what it should have come down to is the UFC should have... If they if they did the same thing to Hill, they should have stepped in and had the cojones to, uh, to strip him if that was going to be the case. Um, should he have vacated? I would say for the consistency and for the division as a fan and for the amount of times he's probably held up people's careers, I would say, yeah. But if I was him, I'm with you, man. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Like, it's, I mean, no. Like, why would he? He's got no incentive to do that. The money, the legacy, the, you know, the. there's no incentive for him to do so. So it depends on what aspect. If you're, if you're John Jones, of course, you're not doing it. If you're a fan of the sport, knowing what's coming, yeah, you probably want to see him drop it. But I think that this, this again goes to situations with like the operations of how the UFC works and them not sticking man. yes not sticking to rules if you're out for a year then you have to vacate that's the way it should be that's what they've mentioned before but then mm -hmm. you had cases like Dominic Cruz who had like a million injuries in a row he stepped on a Lego and well, he slipped <laughs> on the ice like he, you know, uh, slipped in the in the uh, bathroom, like all kinds of random every ass single, injuries. Every single, each, every single slippage possible. He was just about he was there. Yeah, and so if he had to vacate, you know, eventually they had to let him. He had to, 
but he came back and you know fought Takeo Mitsuzaki and you know got his got his place back in line. But I think that if they stick to hard and fast rules and don't bend the rules for certain people, then they'll get around these situations. But yeah, and you see, they kind of make a rod for their backs by making interim fight interim titles in the same you know just in order yeah. to boost pay per view sales. And so they kind of it's all created with you know how they move dirty anyway. So it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, torn. Yeah, they're making that. it more difficult, making it more difficult for Definitely. themselves. Cool. So the next one: um, Are there any legitimate challengers for Islam Makachev at lightweight? This is the one we alluded to before. Yeah, I, I think I'll take this one first. Then, seeing as we're doing the whole um whole back and forth, I'm gonna sound like a little bit of a hypocrite for what I just said. About <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a little bit of a hypocrite for what I just said about Leon Edwards, you know, especially as he's only had one or two defenses. I honestly think there isn't much of a legit challenge for him at lightweight. And I, I have a feeling you're going to disagree with me on this one. <laughs> now, the, the, the Charles fight was as one-sided as... I love Charles Oliveira. It was as one-sided as it gets. I don't see that changing if they rematch. Uh, Gaethje, he's looked better and better. But he also got folded by Charles, and I don't believe that's a good matchup for him in Islam anyway. Um, then Poirier, he's obviously he's just lost to Gaethje, he's lost to Charles as well. And you know, there's that link with Khabib, obviously, you know, Gaethje and himself both lost to Khabib. You know, if you want to compare that with Makashev. For me, Volkanovsky was the only threat we had in the current roster to take Makashev down at lightweight. And we let that opportunity go to go to pop by rushing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Makashev's massive for the weight. I think he's a legacy legacy style fighter. Like the way he's he often puts a lot of emphasis on, you know, everything to him seems to about being pound for pound. And now that he's achieved that, it's going to be about right now. I want to be seen as the greatest ever. You don't get a lot of opportunities in the sport. He's a naturally big dude already. Mm-hmm. Gonna sound like a hypocrite. I'd like to see him go up and fight Leon. That's what I'm saying. Leon shouldn't be looking in front of him. He should be looking over his shoulder at what's coming up behind him. Because for me, Islam, in the case of Leon, there's a lot more contenders in his division. That I feel like you can see legitimate matchups where you're like, yeah, that guy could be a problem. Shavkat, that you know that we've mentioned. Mm-hmm. I think lightweight's the weakest it's been for a long time. It used to be the marquee division. I don't think it's as strong at that level that it used to be. And yeah, maybe yeah. I sound like a bit of a hypocrite, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. I do disagree, but like, so yeah, I'm gonna say no, nah, but but I, I agree with a lot of the points that you made, but, and, and I would have really, I mean, I'm still, I'm still on the, on the fence about, you know, people moving up. You know, mm-hmm. I want to see more title defenses. I want that to be, you know, to to count more towards their legacy. But when Armin Sarukian did what he just did to uh, Benil Dariush, um, and, and granted, Charles Oliveira got him out of there pretty quick too, but but not like Armin did. And I thought that it was going to be a wrestle fest, and it was going to be a lot like the the Gamrot fight, but. When Sarukian did that, I was like, okay, I see a legitimate challenger. Nah, and I know they fought before, but it was a no, very was interesting bring fight. That up. It, and it was a close fight as well. It was. And Armin was it very was. young. Mm-hmm. You know. He was. So that is a fight that I would like to see um, before he yeah. tries to move up. But And then also, I think that there's other, you know, people that are... Uh, making their way towards the top that I would want him to see him against. I do want to see him against Gaethje to get that over with, because if not, we're going to have that lingering over our heads. And if Poirier fights, I mean, I've heard that he's going to fight Fazeev potentially when Fazeev makes his way back. Um, Which that would be an exciting fight. It would suffer Fazeev to lose to both those dudes, but um, whoever wins that fight would be interesting as well to fight. Um, to fight against uh, Islam, so I think that no, there's I some fights for him. They Gamrot. may not be Gamrot for sure. Like now, that won't be the most exciting fight, but no, that's it's more, a fight more that for needs the hard to course, happen. Definitely, 
Yeah. But it's a fight that needs to happen, to, in my opinion. Though That will only make the fight against uh, whomever is the welterweight champion, hopefully Leon at that point, more interesting. Um, so I think, to me, the people rushing these champ champ or um, fights, it takes the luster off of it. And, and just like what you were saying a minute ago about um, Volkanovski kind of rushing that, that, that chance, if he would have waited beat Taporia and then maybe beat Holloway again and then came back and fought Islam again that would have been a massive fight and it was big but it would have been way bigger and I mean I know that that's kind of chancing it if you're uh, Volkanovski but if you think you're that good you're okay chancing things like that no I I think is he had that yeah yeah at the time I was thinking sorry go ahead I was just saying I think that um the the champ champ fight should be those blue moon every once in a while because you know what if there was if it wasn't as frequent as it is now then the UFC wouldn't have any problems finding um, a main event for UFC 300 if Connor's not gonna fight yeah. they just find a champ champ fight it would it yeah. would be easy but now like who's gonna headline UFC 300 who they got. Who, who yeah, did they bring that we haven't seen? I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. The fact that we're hearing about home and take, you know, I mean, obviously that's not going to be the main event, but the fact that that's something that's being thrown in there, I mean, that shouldn't even be considered. I don't, you know, no disrespect to those ladies, but, you know, UFC, two, UFC 300 is supposed to be marquee. And it's like what you said, though. I think you alluded to it earlier as well. Like, you know, the... These super fight things, when they're when they're put together like this, they don't feel as special anymore. Or as it's starting it's starting to become a little bit, you know, it's losing its, I don't know, it's losing its luster a little bit when they keep doing it just mm-hmm. for the sake of doing it, you know. Yeah, for sure. So now I can for see sure. that. I can see the. I knew I was I knew I was digging myself a like you know the hypocritical <laughs> grave as soon as I started with uh, as soon as we got to the end of the point with um, with uh, Leon I was like oh man I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I've shot myself in the foot already here how am I gonna dig this one out I'm like yeah, do you know what we'll find a way man but I do think that Islam does look dominant at least mm. right now and I would argue that and I have argued this before um, and you know what maybe this is something that people can answer down in the comments this would be an interesting conversation is if Islam and we know this is not ever going to happen if Islam in his prime fought Habib in his prime <laughs> who would win that fight and I'm sure somebody has seen that in the training room but like who would win I'm going to say Islam would win I think that Islam beats Habib I've got to be honest he's I'm, more I'm, dynamic I think so as well I think, I think the striking difference is what edges it for me that's what changes you know. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, people are constantly evolving and moving anyway. So, you know, that's that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just something from what I've seen. He does have that loss on his record, but I could go into this, you know, you know, uh, Khabib and Tibal, you know, I just leave that on the table. That's, you know. Yeah. If you haven't seen that one, Habib against Gleason Tibal, that I don't know if he won that fight. <laughs> it's debatable you know it's, yeah. it's just yeah I say to anyone listening again if it's something that people want to comment on what you know anyone who's ha- who happens to have seen it for me there's question you know, there's question marks for there, sure for sure yeah so this next one this is a good one um, do MMA fighters need Conor McGregor level promo skill to become superstars in the modern era huh. is it my go um, yeah, you can, you can, you can shoot. Okay, um, I think it just depends on what the the definition of superstars is. I'm gonna say, yeah, they do. Um, but I don't think that any if if we define superstars by Conor McGregor level, then yeah, you need it. You need the whole package, and that's what yeah. Conor was. He had the whole package. He had the timing. He had the ability on on the microphone. He had the marketability. He had, um, and I mean, and, and he could fight, and he's a dog. Like that's, I mean, that's what people really like. Discount is how much of a dog he's he is. Easily forgotten. He was a very good, you know, 
You, you, you never get a boring Conor McGregor fight for all the never. times he's messed up. Every single time he brought it, not just the fight itself, but everything surrounding it was always on point, you know? Yeah, and he's a big fight fighter. That's why he beat Eddie Alvarez. The moment got too big for Eddie, and there is no moment too big for Conor. He's built for this. This is what he does. And I'm known for being a person that is on the other side of the fence when it comes to Conor, but I appreciate greatness. And Conor is great. And in order to get to that level, you're going to need the whole package. And the only person that I could see possibly maybe even getting close to Connor level or Rousey level is maybe Sean O'Malley. But at this point right now, to me, he's too quiet. I don't hear mm-hmm. nothing. And so, like, he's going to have to up his game. And that that's saying a lot because I feel like he has a lot going for him. But in order to get to that Connor level, you need everything. And that that promo skill, the ability to cut promos, would be a major part of it for sure. Yeah, no, what I, do you I, think? I actually went down a little little bit of a different different tact. Uh purely like I thought about it from a contextual point of view, because obviously when when Connor was operating, I'm not saying the UFC was small by any means, you know, it was well on its way to being, you know, a a huge force globally but I feel mm-hmm. like now uh, it's a much bigger global brand and obviously that's a result of what Connor did as well he's one of the guys who pushed it to, into that uh, that stratosphere um, and obviously with the way the social media is now and everything and your ability to market yourself it's easier than ever but what kind of made mm-hmm. me come up with this question in particular is it was funnily enough looking at the whole Ian Gary situation recently and the way things have blown up for him it kind of comes down to like, do you have like a fight friendly style or not? Because like, if you don't, then I think it's essential that you're able to talk a really good game. Like Colby would be like an example of that for me. I think Colby's a great fighter. A lot of people don't appreciate that style. So he uses his mouth to get, you know, mm-hmm. the eyes on it. Um, but if you do have a crowd friendly style, but you don't have like, you know, that organic, you know, and it's maybe a borderline corny mic skill like i'd say in the case of like an israel or a gary Mm -hmm. where the amount of of eyeballs that's on the sport now you know actually opening your mouth can be a detriment you know if you can fight well so i'd say in the case i mean it's it's kind of it's kind of like you know where izzy and gary are concerned i I use izzy probably more as a prime example because we've got more of a sample size but the way Mm -hmm. he fights if he was to go in there and does what he does in the cage which at times has been spectacular and then you know kept the whole personality quirk thing down to a minimum with the exposure on the UFC now he could have been by proxy just on talent alone a huge star even Mm -hmm. huger than he is now um for better or worse um obviously what you alluded to as well if you can so for me it comes down to is it organic like do you have the organic promotional skills or the organic fight skills obviously if you can capture lightning in a bowl and be both the prospect is obviously you know the skies of what you can achieve now are, you know it's, it's the limit you know the skies are the limit mm-hmm. but i would say it was it was more of a question that came up to me purely because i'm seeing how guys that are incredibly talented and have that star potential are ruining it by trying to force the issue and to be yeah. what Conor McGregor is when it's not natural to them. That is so true. And that is the first thing that I saw with Ian Gary. Um, I can't remember who it was that he did. It may have been uh, Rodriguez, uh, Daniel Rodriguez, when he, uh, yeah, D-Rod, when he knocked him out and he did the billy walk. Uh, that immediately yeah, and then, turned and then me there off. Was the I whole, was like, dude. Yeah, it turned me off immediately. And then there was the whole talk. You could see him in the back with Dana talking about you see, I can be the next guy. I can be the next guy. I'm bigger than him. And I can talk as well as him. And you're just there like, oh, this is not looking good. It's like, dude, people are going to find out that you're, not, that you're not him if if you keep on doing that shit. It feels very... I think if it's forced, it's wrong. You know, it just has to be... I think that's what was great about Prime Connor. It was just... he. I don't know. At the start, it didn't feel like he was saying things to really necessarily be entertaining or it was planned. He was just doing him. Yeah. It just came across that way. Whereas now, yeah. 
you've got guys forcing it because they feel like they have to and i guess my point is that the brand is so big now and the reach is so big now if you've got one or the other and you market it the right way you focus on what's organically true to you it can be massive in this game now mm-hmm Maybe so, not corner levels. I don't think anything gets to anyone gets to corner levels. I don't. Yeah, I don't really think anybody. It was just the right time, the right opportunity. Everything mm-hmm. just met perfectly for him to to do what he did. I, I don't see us getting anybody like that or on that level. That's no, the perfect. I mean, maybe story. not ever. Yeah, uh, felt like that yeah. anyway to me. So, do you see anybody? Um, like I pointed out, uh, Sean O'Malley. Do you see any any other people that could possibly be, quote unquote, superstars? Maybe not Connor level, but maybe just b- below that. Me, I'm kind of. I, I think because of it depends on what you see as. You know, it's it's like what you alluded to at the beginning. It's what you you see or what you define as a superstar. For me, you know, I'm looking at guys like like Shavkat. I know that sounds wild, but you know people who have got like a a little bit of a like even somebody like Paolo Costa who now, now he's obviously he can't his fighting's not doing the talking. Yeah. Honestly, I don't if we're talking Conor McGregor levels, I don't see anybody doing it, but I think it's more going to be somebody like a Shavkat who continues to just be let the fight and do the talking. And then shows the, the, Alex, Alex Pereira would be a very good example for me as somebody who's because his 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 social personality guy is hilarious but understated it's, it, again it's not forced and he's killing mm-hmm. guys you know so it's yeah I'd have to go with him you know to go with Alex I think that the like they don't put the pay per view buys out there like they used to but I'm fairly probably certain that reason. we haven't that's probably smart yeah. we, we probably haven't hit a million in, in a little while <laughs> long but I feel like the next time that we approach a million it won't be because of one person it'll be because of the matchup i think that that's that's the only way that they're going to get to that level like at this i mean outside of connor fighting whomever he fight a, a, a broom i don't even know really if he matter. does a million now i mean he probably will but it, just by accident know. he might yeah he might i don't know but, I'm not too but i will you know what i was thinking about this um earlier today what if what if this happens? What if, God forbid, Kobe wins, and what if they make Connor versus Kobe? What if Kobe loses, and they make Connor versus Kobe? Would that be the biggest fight that they could possibly make right now? It would. It would have to be up there. It would have to. And it, I mean, who doesn't want to watch that? I mean, purely even just I, for the build up. Yes. That would be the. I think that that would be the biggest fight in the UFC, but they they kind of need Leon to beat Kobe for that to happen. Yeah, I don't think you can justify giving. I mean, you never know with the UFC no. they can. You know, when it comes to Connor, anything's possible. It's but, true. No, I think I think you're right. I think for that fight to be anywhere close to happening, you'd have to, you know, Leon would have to get the job done in that one. Yeah, I think, I think so. Poor old. Uh, cool. Poor old Chan Lai, looking Man. further and further away. He's been just been sitting on the sidelines, chilling, not doing nothing. I mean, healing. He must have got the bag, but, get, but also getting older. <laughs> I don't know if I, the thing is yeah, He's kind of with Chan I could go on about that guy all day. I think I can see why he's waiting. It's a risky one to, you know. He seems it's almost like a pity thing now. It's like you have to give me the fight. You have to look how long I've been waiting. You know. Yeah, I mean he's, he's going to get done dirty. Right I can now. see it coming. He's going to get he's going to get done dirty. I can I can I feel it. I feel it. I coming. hope he doesn't, but I mean, and I've rooted for him to lose in almost every fight that he's in. But really? but I like him as a person. Mm-hmm. I really like him as a person, and I really want this to work for him. You know, so I I, I don't know, but he's 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 really gambling with his career by waiting on this dude. So. 100%, yeah. All right, so here's the last one. This was, this one had me thinking a little bit. Is inconsistent judging ruining the integrity of the sport and fan engagement? Mm, okay, um, you know, I'm I'm not sure if I'd go as far as to say as like the legitimacy of the 
the legitimacy of the sport is on a knife edge now. Um, what I would say is somebody who does enjoy a little bit of a flutter on the weekend, you know, gamble responsibly, kids, to anyone's listening. <laughs> um, but I've been left raging multiple times this year, you know, so I would say judging's definitely ruined it for me at certain times. And I think I think anybody who does fancy a little bit of a flutter on a regular basis would probably have the same opinion. Um, you know, one of the biggest bright gripes that I've had with boxing for years, because I was a big fan of boxing growing up, is, you know, it can be so partisan biased at times or star power influenced yeah. where you often get fights where there's a very clear winner and mm -hmm. that guy doesn't get his hand raised. Uh, MMA does get away with it more because, you know, on cards where you've got 10, 15 fights, you know, for people to watch all the way through, most won't have poor judging. So it kind of feels like the outcomes are less stark when it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I think what it comes down to is there seems to be a disparity about this concept of, you know, the sport being damaged base at times and sometimes control time just being randomly favored. I mean, those are the two things that kind of stand out to me. I think it tends yeah. to bring more questions than it does answers. You know, I think having a fraternity of judges is a big problem. Um, a lack of education for the audience, I think, is a problem. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the solutions are kind of... What are the solutions? That it's, it's, it's difficult. There's always going to be some form of judging one way or another. But I do think it is a problem, and I think it is something that is spoiling the experience on occasion. It seems to be on more occasions than not for me. I mean, I, I might be alone on an island for that, but for me personally, I feel like it's becoming more prominent where there's just ridiculousness happening week after week. You know, so that's where I start. I would, I would agree that, I mean, we talk about judging way more than we probably should. Um, and it's because of them. Um, <laughs> they're inconsistent. And I think that that really comes down to the commissions, like really getting, they don't talk to each other and they don't get everything together on one page. Um, there's certain commissions that get things right. There's other commissions that don't know what the hell they're doing. And it shows by the judges and the judging. Um, but that being said, as far as the integrity, I think that um, I think the fighters are trying to win. I mean, and they're they're playing the game by the rules that are given. But as far as fan engagement, I actually think that judging this judging foolishness is good for fan engagement <laughs> because it gets people talking about fights that like, OK, I'll give you an example. Um, the Kai Car France against Amir Albazi fight. Um, that was you see super me boiling, close. Mate. You can see my I'm boiling already. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, a trigger. Yeah, that was a trigger, bro. And like everybody, you know, was on one side of the fence. I mean, Kai Car France won that fight, like straight up. Like if you saw this fight at your school and you know at lunch by the flagpole, and you see them <laughs> two fight. And then you go back and you talk with your friends. You're like, who won that fight? Oh, it was Kai Car France won that fight. <laughs> Everybody would say that. And that's kind yeah. of the way that we look at it. But the judges are looking at it a different way. And we I'm like, well, what lens, what what window did you look at that through? But yeah. it did cause a lot of conversation about a fight that people would have not normally talked not about. Probably. That's a really, really good point, to be fair. I mean, that was probably one of the deadest cards of the year. And the first thing I did after making my reaction to it is I got on Twitter and just started cooking. And everyone yeah, was I remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I was feeling so. Like, I mean, and rightfully so. And 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 it's funny. Leading into that card, I was saying that this is the most boring card of the year, and I was wrong because oh, you've got me. You've got me thinking. That, you know, you've got me thinking that maybe there's something to this. I mean, I mean, I hope it's not. I hope it's not. But, but. If it's not inadvertently, that that's what's happening, and it's creating a lot of fan engagement, a lot of people talking about it, and a lot of people watching to see, okay, is Sal Diamato going to get this shit right? Is Mike Taco Bell going to get this shit right? <laughs> like, like, what are, what are they going to do when it comes to this judging? And it also gives the fighters more initiative to just to like not leave it finish, in the hands yeah. of the judges. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really what it comes down to, you know. I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of that as well. I think it, it is a very com, you know, it's a it's a very complex problem, 
and I, you know, as much as I as I moan about it, and I I love to moan, you know, having that British that British blood in me, I don't feel good unless I've had <laughs> started my day with a bit of a wind, you know. But uh, <laughs> but to be fair, like I mean, yeah, it's just it's how do you solve it? Like it's and like you said, it generates interest, mm-hmm. it generates chatter. Some fighters end mm-hmm. up on the rough end of it, but sometimes the fighter you love end up on, ends up on the good end of it. Yeah, you know. It, matter of fact, um, it happened uh, when Anthony Smith fought Ryan Spann the last time. You know, the second time that they fought, Ryan Spann probably won that fight. But Anthony Smith got his hand raised, so hurry up and run out <laughs> the building before they change their mind. Yeah. <laughs> so and sometimes if you bet it on works Anthony Smith, favor. which uh, I think I did that night. Like, you didn't see mm-hmm. me complaining or cooking on Twitter then, so <laughs> it is what That's it true. is. <laughs> So yeah, it comes down. It comes down to how much money I made that weekend, really. So it, it, if we're talking about an integrity point of point of view, it's more to do with how much did I get paid that weekend, and that's what it comes down to. I mean, that's what happens. Is how it works. Cool. Okay. So let's yeah. let's hit this this second segment. Um, so the second segment is called I Tried to Tell You. And this is where we talk about what we think is going to happen at UFC 296. So we're going to talk about the fight of the night, the KO of the night, submission of the night, um, the I don't know what the fuck is about to happen, and the most boring fight of the night. So we can start at the most boring fight of the night. Okay. I think I think we might actually pick the same one. <laughs> I, I, do you know what? Yeah, I'm really glad that we didn't discuss this or trade information beforehand because I'm I was very interested to see how this 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 segment of yours, by the way, I really love. So to be a part of it now, I'm a bit like, I've got goosebumps, you know. So, <laughs> all right. Um, this so this is the one I've kind of mentally framed as like turd of the night. That's how I'm kind of trying yeah. to see it. And I did have another term for it, but I said to you beforehand, I was going to do my best to behave in what language I was going to use. <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, it's funny. I've cussed more than you have. <laughs> Who knew? Like, I mean, what, were the, what was the over-under on that? The possibility of that? Yeah, I don't know what the over-under was. I should have I had a, a, a cuss word. I should word, have had a counter. Uh, we should count. have like a little counter in the yeah. corner next time and see, what, see how it goes. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to go with... Um, the fight between Todi, Cody Durden and Ulan Bekov. Mm, okay. Um, now I've got a few reasons for this. Like I, I, for some reason, I can't quite put my finger on it. I really dislike Cody Durden. I don't know why. Uh, there's something a way, to, something about the way that he talks. You know, just his like his general face that just makes me want to see the guy get flatlined. Like there's something sometimes. about him. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I feel like with the style that he has, you know, Ulan Bekov is kind of. As far as Dagestanis go, he's kind of a little bit of the runt of the litter. That sounds a little bit harsh. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to spend. True, 50, yeah, I just think he's. I just think he's. You know, his wrestling is not that good. His takedown defense is a bit iffy. I think he's going to get dry humped for fifteen minutes, and I think we're all going to feel <laughs> very uncomfortable watching it. Yeah, that's, no, that's how I see one. that one. That's going. a good one. So I, I didn't even pick a I didn't even pick a ladies fight. I didn't pick a ladies fight. So I, I know I knew you were expecting that. So I decided to throw a curveball in there. You know? I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I uncharacteristically picked uh, Irene Aldana against Carol Rosa. I don't think that this is going to be an exciting fight, and the reason being is because one, Carol Rosa is not a finisher. Um, that's just not what she's done uh, in, in recent times. And mm-hmm. Irene Aldana is more of a point fighter who's going to stay on the outside. I think that Rosa is going to press her up against the fence and Aldana is going to try to break away from that, mm-hmm. beat her with the jab, and we're going to be in for a, a decision that could be a split decision. I think Aldana is going to win it, but uh, I mean, I'm going to watch it because that's what I do, but I watch and I actually am an all down a fan. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I might still get up and get something to drink at that, same, at that point in time too. So. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, you're a very you're yeah. a very polite guy. It's, it's good, it's, it's good. I like <laughs> it. 
No, I, again, yeah. that, that was on the... It, it was one I considered as well. I think the only reason why I swayed more towards the Durden fight is... I think Aldana really was embarrassed last time out. You know, she did very little against Nunes. Yeah. And something tells me she's going to try and go for it a little bit more in this one. And that was the only I, I reason hope why so. I felt... She's, hmm. she's got this the is ability. the kind of one where we, we both want to be wrong. We don't want any boring fights. I really fights. do. Hmm. No, don't want any boring, boring fights. But, um, I mean, I just... I think she's going to try to play it safe. Kind of stand on business and hold on to her spot uh, in the ranking so she can start to go back up. But... I think it's I a don't good know. question. Show. I don't know. Okay, so the next one... Um, I'll skip this one. So I'll go to submission of the night. Which one do you think will be the submission of the night? I had a little bit of back and forth about this one. I'm going to go with the fight between Roy Vall and Pantoja. Mm. Uh, I know that, you know, before Pantoja fought, fought Moreno, despite, you know, the two wins against him, I, I considered Moreno to be the best flyweight in the world. And we all saw what happened in that third fight. Mm-hmm. I just think they're both so, you know, again, no, no, I'm not, I'm not sure which way. If I, if I had to pick a side, I would say that I obviously think Pantova is going to win the fight. You know, I think he's um, unbelievable. I wouldn't be overly shocked if Moreno latched in a submission as well. You know, with, you know, he's kind of known for being able to grab a limb out of nowhere. He's got a few kind of, you know, out of the blue shot in the dark kind of submission wins in the past. He's more than capable of snatching up very strange, strange positions on the ground. Mm-hmm. I just think with the skill that both of them have got, I can see... If one of them makes a mistake, I can see the other one pouncing on it. And it being, yeah, I think that for me, that's the most likely fight where we're going to see a submission on either side. And I think it would be, you know, something flashy as well, potentially. I, I almost went there and, and I agree. Um, I think that... Um, Man, Roy Vall's, his ability to work in scrambles is crazy. I just don't know how he's thinking so fast um, during these scrambles. Um, but same thing, you could say the same thing about Pantoja, but like, uh, and I, I do think that that he's going to retain um, his belt, um, even though I want Roy Vall to win. I like Roy Vall as well. I really like Roy Vall. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like his nickname. I don't. I don't like. I don't. What like is his nickname? Dog. I can't remember off the top of my head. Raw dog. Yeah, that doesn't. Like I'm that sorry. Name. That make, that makes me feel a little bit. I think I threw up a little bit in my mouth there. To be honest, yeah, that's, yeah that's not I the feel one. a little uneasy. It sounds like something that you do and that you weren't supposed to be doing with a chick um, after the club. I, that's not cool. But Fair play, yeah. um, I do uh, like his game. I like that he can finish the fight anywhere, and I think that he's exciting. Um, but I think that Pantoja finds a way to get it done. Um, and they it could probably cancel each other. We might not even see a sub. They could cancel each other out because they're both really good down yeah. there as well. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's a rematch. So Roy Vall knows what to what to be looking for, for sure. Um, so what did you go with, my I man? Know. I went with Patty Pimblett against Tony Ferguson. Oh, no. <laughs> so I guess, I guess it's... I think um, that... I think that somehow Patty gets it to the to the ground, and he su- and he subs him, and it takes Tony forever to tap, showing how tough he is. Um, you know, that's a great shot, only. you know. But because he's not going to he's Patty not going to submit, is he? he's going to he's probably going to it would be like him, you know, with his tongue hanging out of his mouth and his literal crosses some weird, above his eyes. terrible break his arm, something <sighs> awful, yeah, to make us all unbelievably sad. Um, it's another one that I, I wish I'm wrong. Um, I, I wish they didn't Patty make this fight. To again. be honest, yeah, I actually like Patty. How does how is it over there with Patty? Like, what 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 is, what are people's feelings over there about Patty? I think he's seen as a kind of an a Weasley little scumbag. To be honest with you, I don't think anyone likes him. From what I can, I think you know what it is. It's like. I think where it went, where it went off a cliff for him was the way he responded after the Jared Gordon fight. Mm. I think he had the people behind him up until that point, and I think like 
to clearly lose that fight. It started out kind of well when, you know, he was like, oh, you know, I broke my leg in the first round. And we were expecting like, oh, you broke your leg in the first round. So that's why he beat you up for another two rounds. And he, he, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then to be like, I broke my leg. And then, but I, but I kicked his ass after that. It's like, and then the whole just arrogance of it. And the, I just, I think everyone was like, yeah. this guy's an idiot. Like we just, we just turned on him then. And then I think just, you know, just a general, I don't know. There's something about the guy that just doesn't, again, it's that organic thing again. I think he forces things a lot mm -hmm. as well. But yeah. from what, again, what, what I can tell from what the, how the people generally feel now, there's definitely been a turn on him. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, the most people that, that I've interacted with, they don't really like him as much. I, I like him. I like Patty. Um, I thought that he lost that fight against Jared and I didn't like that response. Um, that was, that was dumb. Um, <laughs> but, but that being said, I, I, I like his, the reason why I like him is because of his podcast. That's why I like him. Do you know um, what to be? I've I never seen it And I think that's what it is, is a lot of people haven't really seen that side of him. And he's, he's just a different person there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of what I gravitated to. Um, but as far as the fighter, I do think that he's overhyped. Um, and I think they were trying to, again, catch lightning in the bottle uh, when it came to him. And he got gifted a a decision, and a lot of times when, when fighters get gifted a decision that may have been controversial, you know they do great things afterwards, and that's what oh, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. is going to happen here. You know that's what Sean O'Malley did against you know after he won against Peter Yan, um, yeah. you know he did something spectacular, and maybe that's what Patty does here. Who knows? Very, but, very, very possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I. I dog on him a lot, you know, especially anyone who, anyone listening who follows my Twitter, I feel like it's, it's taken up 90% of my content these days. You know, I go a little bit too hard on him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think like there's there's definitely a, there's a redemption arc there for him if he's willing to take it. And I've, hopefully he's yeah. kind of learned from, sometimes a little bit of humility is, you know, I think in his situation now, I think if he if he beats Tony, which I think we're all expecting, if he can be humble in victory, it might be go a long way to repairing some of the damage he's done, certainly with the fans over here. I hope so. I hope so. Good shout for submission it, tonight, though. I like that one. Yeah. It breaks yeah, my heart, but one. I like it. <laughs> for real. Okay, so um, what do you think will be fight of the night? I'm going with uh, O'Neill and Lipsky. No, no, I'm, Ooh, kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry, I, it was. I just did it for the look on your face. Too. I was sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, I did you dirty there. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Shavka and Wonderboy. Now, I've got a few reasons again for for, for picking that one over everything. Um, I think people are talking like Shavka is gonna absolutely murder him. And uh, nobody's higher on Shavkat than I am. Like, I love the dude. Um, I think they're both going to have moments of adversity in this fight. I think it's going to be a war. Like, now, mm -hmm. there's the obvious thing of Shavkat could, obviously, he, he could dominate him on the ground, take him down and dominate him on the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to stand with him, just like he did, he did with um, Neil, Jeff Neil. Yeah, and I think anyone who plays that game with Wonder Boy, at some point in the fight, you're going to get cracked. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I rate Jeff Neal. I think he's a very, very decent fighter. Um, he had he had Shavkat hurt a few times in that fight, and obviously Shavkat shattered his way yeah. through it. But I think if he has the kind of style of fight that I expect him to have with Wonder Boy, it's going to be very crowd pleasing. It's going to be on the feet for three rounds. Unless something really crazy happens, I can see this being an absolute war, and both of them being hurt at stages, and then it just being a war of attrition. Mm -hmm. So I can see it coming down to you. That's, that's what my gut's telling me. I also picked Shavkat against Wonder Boy. Um, I, I totally agree, and 
what Wonder Boy showed me in his last fight was he is still quick. And that is going to, I mean, and probably he, he's still quicker than the majority of people in the division. And that's amazing to say about somebody that's 40 years old. And yeah. I think that it's it's almost going to make Shavkat take the path of least resistance and take him down. Um, but if Shavkat, Shavkat wants to stay, you know, doing that, like you said, against Jeff Neal, he got into a little bit of trouble, had to get a little bit closer and a little bit more intimate. Had to grab him, and what you a might fight that was! The by the thing. way, holy, holy man. god, that was such a great fight. And Jeff and Jeff Neal is, you know, from man, maybe thirty minutes away from here. Um, and he he worked at a restaurant that I used to go to all the time. So like, oh snap. Um, so yeah, like I, I take uh, Jeff Neal uh, conversation very personally, <laughs> uh, Ian Gary. I'm but, glad um, I didn't say anything rude there. You know, it was a, you know how I you know how I stay sometimes. That, could, that was a close one. If we'd gone on for another few minutes, it could have got it could have got ugly. You know. <laughs> but no, nah, I think that that's going to be an amazing fight, and I think that if it stays on the feet, it'll it'll definitely be crowd pleasing. And Shavkat can, I do think Shavkat's going to win, but um, do too. if he doesn't take it down, he's playing with fire for sure. Um but it'll definitely be fight of the night, I think. Yeah, I'm really excited for it, for sure. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great one. I'm worried, but I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's, you know, because like I said, I, I think Shavkat's got, like, an incredible future, and part of me is, like, I want to see him, obviously I want to see him do as well as possible, but yeah, nobody wants this, nobody in their right mind wants to see Stephen Thompson get murdered in there. So no. it's a tough situation to be in. Nah, dude drives a bus for school kids, you know, to take him to the karate academy. Like, nobody wants to see the, that dude get knocked out like that. No, even somebody so, as a, much yeah. of a scumbag as I am, like I have to say, <laughs> even even with my black heart, I don't want to see anything too bad happen to Wonder Boy. Nah. Okay, so what do you got for KO of the night? Okay. Um. I didn't think you would you would agree with me on this one, but now that we've had a little bit of time to go back and forth in it, you know, we're running out of fights a little bit. I'm going with Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell. I almost went there. I almost went there. Um, I think not only is he going to... is the, I think Josh Emmett's going to win, and I don't think he's just going to catch him. I think it's going to be like viral KO... Dang. I think he's going to be chin down, ass up. I think that's what we're going to see. <laughs> it's going to look. It's it's going to be meme of the. It's going to be me, the meme of the year to close out the year. I think it's going to be. It's going to have the. And, it's going to win the booty in the air uh, the award. The air, yeah, chin down award. Yeah, the <laughs> bro. Honestly, and I, I think is it. I like Bryce Mitchell. Like I get. I you know I enjoy him. Like. Mm -hmm just uh, he's worried me like i think he, you know he, he obviously got he got absolutely um destroyed by tapuria mm -hmm. and then against ige i i bet on i bet on bryce and i wasn't sure like he got caught it was one of those ones we were talking about earlier with the betting and stuff like end of the night comes like i'm i felt like he did win but you know how things are these days he got cracked a couple of times yeah he did and i also think that that emmett you know, a little tank of a man. His takedown defense is very decent. And I can see, you know, em um, Mitchell has this very bad habit of at the start of a fight. He likes to test things out on the feet a little bit. And he's a bit goofy with it. And I think if he plays that game for too mm -hmm. long with Emmett, he's going to get smashed. And I just have a feeling yeah. that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to be brutal. I do. I, I think so. I think that Emmett catches him. Because... I mean, even when Emmett fought um, Yair Rodriguez, um, I was worried for y Yair even as it was getting closer to him catch getting that finish. Like, he carries power throughout the fight all the time. That's all he does. And you like are w one mistake away from going to sleep. Hmm. And I agree, like, Bryce is, he is goofy on his little entries and stuff like that. He does weird stuff. That leaves him very open to getting caught. And you yeah. can't do that against Josh Emmett. 
And that's yeah, that's so that's where I'm kind of leaning because when when the fight was initially made, I was thinking, you know, uh, I'm probably gonna pick Bryce. And the more and more I thought about it and had more interactions with it, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I don't like the. I don't like the <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeing an ass in the air. That's all I'm seeing. That's when I go to sleep at night. You know, maybe I've got some things to think about. <laughs> but like. <laughs> Yeah, maybe some discussions that need to be had at home, you know what I'm saying? If that's what the, if that's the last thing I'm thinking about going to bed, like, but, uh, like we'll, have, we'll save that conversation for another day. In the closet, or if you're coming out of it, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's a conversation that's got to be had. I'm, I'm just realizing. <laughs> no, that's a good one. So my KO of the night is, uh, I think, the Vincente Luque knocks out Ian Gary really yeah that would be a beautiful I think Ian Gary's year, probably in it? his head and I think that that O has to go yeah. um I think that I think there's too much shit going on in his life right now man it's too much whirling around his head and I think that he's not as focused as he needs to be and when he fought uh Song Kanon yeah um a couple of fights ago he got cracked cracked like he bad. got hit I think if that fight went on 30 seconds not even 30 seconds 15 seconds longer he was gone yeah he was gone and Luque is not that forgiving so I think that I think that Luque is going to catch him Luque is very focused on this fight and I think that um, the MMA guides kind of right the ship a little bit on this and uh, let him uh, allow him to to create his own comeback story um, so he's going to lose, tumble down the rankings and then start his, his way back. People will, for, will start to forgive him for all the weird stuff with his wife and the Jeff Neal thing and everything and as he makes his way back. I think that that's for him. Actually, he might need to lose. I, you know, I, and I, I think that's, that's the beauty. That, that is the beautiful thing about MMA. I think it's not like boxing where you lose your career is basically done once that, once that bagel's yeah. gone you know sometimes the best way to learn in this sport is to get like a filthy humbling so and Luke is not a bad person to get it from because you know he's not the kind of guy who's gonna flatline you and then start dancing on your grave yeah no. Nah. he'll be he's gentle he'll be gentle he'll be gentle you know yeah yeah <laughs> 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 it'll it'll be a nice a nice ass whooping. It'll be a nice ass whooping. If that's if those if those exist, that's the, the best chance he's got is is getting it from from Luke. That's a great shout. Like I'm I'm hearing a lot of people kind of more or more people than than I was expecting saying that they they don't like Gary in this one. It's interesting. Yeah, I think that his eyes off the ball. I think that he's not how not could it not be concentrating? Plus he's had to bounce around, you know, these different camps and I, I, I don't know. I just don't think that he's as focused. But but who knows? Maybe he doesn't need to be focused. I don't know. Man. Yeah. But I, I think Maybe he's going to get his ass knocked out. We'll see. I mm-hmm. can see it. All right. I so here's the last one. Here's the last one. Um, is um, I don't know what the fuck is about to happen in this fight. I'm going to be boring on this one. And it's, it feels so bad to end it in this way. I'm going to go with the main event. And uh, the reason why I'm going with Colby and Leon is because I I can I've honestly thought about this fight a hundred times over, and the way that I see it is I think it's going to be one sided, one way or the other. Um, I can see Leon either like stuffing everything and then on the feet just beating the absolute brakes off him standing, and it just being because he's obviously the far superior striker. I mean, I don't think anyone would would dispute that. Um, which is honestly what I'm kind of more leaning towards. You know, I think that if I had to, if I had my arm twisted, I'd, I'd go with Leon and listen, if the fight going down that way. Or Colby successfully pressures him for five rounds. And it's going to kind of resemble what Kamari did to him in the first fight between, you know, rounds two and five, when he essentially had him pinned up down against the fence, ugly. But that's it. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen one way or the other. So I, I can see it being one of both extremes. And that's where I'm at. I literally wouldn't be. It's one of those ones where the, anything that happens in this fight 
maybe outside of a Colby chin in him I think that would that would genuinely shock me I think if yeah, Colby chinned yeah. him and he was knocked out cold I think that's the only outcome that we, I'd be like oh shit like but mm-hmm. anything else wouldn't shock me in the slightest yep I went exactly where you just went <laughs> see the, the geniuses fact, in the game man it's yeah who we are. I, I, I think that's what it is but I think the um and I'm going to make a, a video about this, about why I'm so confused. Um, because, like, you know, leading into it, like, I was like, oh, pff, Leon's got that. You know, I don't even think this dude even deserves a, a title shot. He's been out for, you know, a year and a half, more than that. Yeah. You know, like, why does he deserve a title shot? But then the more I start thinking about it, and I thought about... um the way that I've seen Leon be towards the end of fights, you know, when, when he fought Nate, how he started to, you know, be a little bit more susceptible to, you know, being hit against a person who does not have power. Um, and then, you know, like you said about Kamaru, Kamaru controlled him for a massive amount of that fight until he got head kick KO'd. Mm-hmm. And that was a Hail Mary. He was about to lose. He, that he, fight. Did, he did have a very good first round. I give him that. Like a, he I mean, did. to take to take Kamaru down was great. But then, and obviously, it being in Utah, the altitude was something that's been talked about as a factor. Mm-hmm. I just, I mean, it creates a seed of doubt that I didn't know existed, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm worried about. And that's why I'm like, I, I was talking to to CJ. And she's actually going for Colby, which is weird, but whatever. That's another conversation. <laughs> and so, um, and I was telling her, I was like, I, I, I wouldn't bet on this fight. I don't, I really don't feel comfortable betting on this fight because no. I'm just not as confident. You know how when uh, Kamara would fight somebody you know, before Leon, you going into a fight, you're like, ah, you know, he's probably going to win that fight. Mm. You know, it it almost doesn't even give you a lot to talk about. Or John Jones, when he would fight somebody, you're like, ah, you know. He's definitely going to get that done, yeah. But me, after... Like, I don't feel that way. The year we've had as well, this has been the year of the underdog. And like, the year of the the, the unlikely or the year of the impossible at times. It's just felt like that, you know, where nothing feels certain anymore. And it's just nothing uh, for good and for That's bad. That's what makes it so exciting. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I think it's I, a good I'm show. I'm in total agreement. Yeah. Total agreement with that for sure. Excited but, um, anyway. Yeah. Great card to end the year. So I have to put a punctuation. Excellent card. There. Excellent card. Almost top to bottom. Um, oh, it is from top for to bottom. A card it's just to, for a card to have Randy Brown as the first fight. Like, it's crazy. Like, crazy that's that's an insane card he he was on he, he was a, like the feature legit. fight he was like the feature fight on a fight night not too while ago yeah if i can remember rightly like he was he's i know that's not saying much with the way the cards have been this year but to, like you said to have him as the opener it's crazy there's no fight I mean, on this card it's absolutely whack there's not there's just not it doesn't nah. fantastic fight here. not at all fantastic they card. got five ranked fighters on the early prelims you don't see that often. You never see that, really. No, it is. Nah. It was only when I really looked at it um, a couple of weeks ago to start thinking about my breakdown. I was like, "Wow, no, this is this is legitimately stacked from top to bottom." We didn't even need. Mm-hmm. We didn't even need a um, Bryce Mitchell to step in. Like, I'm happy that he did. But the card would have yeah. been all right still without him. I'm excited. Yep, yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm excited. Cool. So we 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 got through. Um, these two things um, before we jump off uh, anything you want to want to say to to the folks out there about about the channel or anything like that expect more there's 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 going to be a lot more coming um, this has been an absolute pleasure I've, I've enjoyed every second of this it's been it's been a really great experience and I just want to uh, you know I just want to say thanks for having me on really and for for giving me the opportunity to do this you know as I said at the beginning I've been a fan of yours of, of yours and CJ's for a while I've been watching what you guys are doing. I think you're doing amazing things. So the opportunity to have a little back and forth here has been been amazing, and I'm looking forward to doing doing more in the future. For sure, absolutely, we definitely do more. Um, so yeah, anybody that that uh, 
doesn't follow him on Twitter, definitely do so. He is a hilarious follow. Um, definitely subscribe to him, um, to his channel. And um, and if you're not subscribed here, I mean, that goes without that's saying. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why yeah. that would be the case, but do that immediately. <laughs> and if you follow me, yeah. fo follow making the walk MMA as well if you haven't already. Because, like I said. Don't start yeah, talking to me about absolutely. production value though after you see his. I don't want to be hearing about none of that. Like, they'll be coming from me though. Like, <laughs> I don't be going to him and then talking down my stuff. That's what I'm going to say. Just you know, <laughs> different. Just take care as it is, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't give I don't give betting advice. He gives way better betting advice than I do. And I have sure. had a pretty good year to be fair. I'm, I'm hovering at I'm hovering at around 70, percent which is which is not bad for the year. That's pretty a lot good better for than I was May, expecting. For sure. 100, percent yeah. I was, a lot of luck along the way. I guess the judging isn't that bad. I don't know what I'm complaining about. I've been, I've been, See? I've been. I should be on the opposite side. You give some, and, you, and you, you give and take. It's a give and take on that. Hundred <laughs> percent. Cool. So uh, yeah. Until next time, y'all. Uh, we'll catch you later. Peace.